This is the We Are USANA Video Series 2020. Hosted by Chief Sales Officer David Mullum. Episode 3 starts now. Well, hi everyone. It's week three of We Are USANA video series. This really is the new normal, isn't it? And um, staying connected and doing our business over video chats and being uh, connected through Zoom, it's been phenomenal. Um, since this is what we are all doing now, I thought we could start off this week's episode with a few tips to make your video conferencing and your video calls look as good as mine. Very oh, savvy. Okay. You look very Thank nice. You. Mm -hmm. All right. But we might need to fix that. Surf Is that a surfboard back there? Jeff, you might want to clean up your room just a little bit too, David. Oh, you can't be serious. <laughs> like this is what we're doing just a bit. Yeah, just move that just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit back. Yeah, there you go. What about this, all right? That's perfect. We may want to fix your frame just a little bit. Can you put uh, your computer up a little bit, put some books under it or something so we... Yes, I have two books available, Crushing It and Mindset. Mindset is probably... These guys are so bossy. Okay, how's that? Oh, that's perfect. Okay. What about the lighting, you guys? Does that look good? Is that, yeah. a, is that a lamp on your table, David? Yes, there's a lamp on my table. Oh, okay. I think that's maybe a little bit much. Maybe push it back just a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah, 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 okay. Can you tap, tap your mic, make sure we're getting the right mic? Yeah, select a microphone. So I actually got that right. Well, you sound beautiful. <laughs> That'll be my phone. Who is calling? Uh, and and uh, David, could you silence your phone, please? I think we're ready. Ready, David? Ready. Action. What am I doing? <laughs> Oh, uh, I got a script. I got a script. That's, that's, that's all. Did, did, did anybody send you a script? So now you get an idea of what I have to put up with with the USANA Home Office Studios team, just giving me a hard time. But look, it's worth going to the trouble. Helps bump up your video chats to the next level. It'll help you with credibility because people will take you more seriously, even though I'm doing it in my shorts. So last week was exciting, wasn't it? A surprise product announcement with the next chapter in Cell Aviv, the Brightening Series and the Scrub and Mask, Mother's Day promotions and a global product promotion and celebrating women in business with great stories from two of our great female leaders from our USANA family. This week, I have to say we're bumping it up another notch. It's really exciting. Coming up in a bit, Dr. Wentz and Prudence will join us from their home and Dr. Rob Sinnott is going to take us back to the Future Lab. But first, it's always great to hear from our Chairman and CEO, Kevin Guest. So our Executive Vice President of Communications, Amy Harron, caught up with Kevin to ask him the questions many of you have been asking. Amy, I'm watching your shot and make sure you're okay. um, up to par. Great, make me nervous right off the bat. How's this, David? I might have had a little help from the USANA Studios team, but we won't tell David that. For USANA employees around the world, we recently initiated a weekly chat with the executive team to talk candidly about the current world situation and to get a little personal with our leadership who are guiding USANA. We call it three questions with whomever we are interviewing this week. We thought we could invite in all of you on this week's session. And since it just happens to be with USANA's chairman of the board and CEO, we're beefing it up to five questions with Kevin Guest. Hi, Kevin. Hi, it's been Amy. like, I think, two months since we've been in the same room together. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Hey, that does not count as my first question. I hope we realize that. So <laughs> I'm glad things are going well. Um, to get things started, I know you have been heavily involved in the Direct Selling Association, Board of Directors, as well as the CEO, CEO Council for the World Federation of Direct Selling Associations. How do you think current world events will affect the direct selling industry as a whole? Well, uh, what I've seen and been witnessing from an industry perspective is that um, our industry is very well po positioned 
to, to respond uh, for what's happening in the world. Uh, we're used to working from home. We're used to utilizing technology. And it's been a folks at USANA for the last several years, uh, technology. And it was very fortuitous that uh, we are very well positioned and somewhat ahead of the game from a technology perspective so that we can continue to function and operate at a very, very high level. The industry as a whole is also responding well. Um, products in the direct selling space have been uh, very uh, well received and uh, we're seeing many companies uh, see uh, record growth at this time as well as us here at USANA we're seeing some some great activity around the world. Where is USANA headed? What opportunities do you think we have right now? So what I can say is our vision has only expanded to the healthiest family on earth and now more than ever, health is more of a topic on people's minds. And so we've become more and more relevant uh, in today's marketplace. Uh, we are still headed in the direction we started uh, last year, which is we are working on new products, new products to launch, which will be coming soon. Uh, we're still working on our foods manufacturing facility, which is online and on track, and we're excited about that. And we're looking for new ways to help the customer experience be even that much more robust as we utilize technology. Something that has been a huge benefit for us is it's forced us into utilizing technology from a customer service perspective, from an interaction perspective with our associates globally. Uh, an example is uh, usually I jump on an airplane and fly halfway around the world to have a meeting. Now uh, I'm from my own home uh, having meetings with distributors, associates, uh, global leaders around the world right here from Utah, and it's become very effective. And so um, I see this as a great opportunity for us to expand and utilize technology in a, in a better way, but uh, also for us, it's been a good test for our systems and how do we respond and how do we react as a company in the midst of a global pandemic. And I'm pleased to announce and proud to say that everybody from top to bottom has responded very well from our associate and customer base to our employees. And everyone is every bit, if not more, as engaged as they were before this all started. What lessons do you think we can all personally take away from this current experience? Or have you had sort of that thought yourself where you're like, you know what, I'm taking this with me? So one thing that most people aren't aware of is I've taken a little bit of time off for some self-care, uh, something I haven't done in my entire career. Uh, um, usually I'm taking the family on a vacation or doing some other things, and I have really set a goal during this time to take care of myself uh, mentally as well as physically. And, um, and so um, – I, I would encourage everybody just to take an inventory of yourself and utilize this time where we might have some extra downtime, uh, where we're not commuting or doing other things, and, um, and identify a few things for yourself that are for you. Be selfish. Uh, selfish is usually a negative term, but in this context, I think it's very positive. For me, it's been positive. I've probably, um, over the last two months, I think I've read probably eight or nine books. I have doubled down on my exercise and set some new exercise goals because now uh, with some extra time, I can get out and walk. I can walk around the neighborhood. I can exercise um, and be very conscious about what I'm eating and how I'm just holistically looking at myself. So my advice would be take an inventory of yourself, uh, but most importantly, take action and pick one or two things that you can do in this unique time that you normally probably wouldn't do and, um, and then put an action plan together and get to work. Um, I know you're always reading something amazing. I have so many books and articles that you've passed on to me over the years. Is there a book that you have read or that you're reading now that has really had a big impact for you? And can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, um, a book I've actually read. I'm on my third time reading it uh, within the last probably six weeks. Wow. Um, <laughs> and the book is called The Reality Slap. It's by Russ Harris, and it's about when life 
uh, hurts or when life punches you in the nose or whatever, how do you react in a healthy way? And um, it's been so impactful on me specifically because of the time we're in and the challenging times we're in because I think reality has slapped many people across the face uh, during this time and to how to health in a healthy manner deal with those kinds of issues as they come up has been very, very important for me, but also uh, for other friends and family members who might be having challenging times. It's helped me uh, come up with and learn how to communicate more effectively and more properly One of the techniques that's in the book that I learned, it's called SRB. S stands for stop, Uh, R stands for refocus, and B stands for breathe. And so if you're slapped in the face with something uh, that stops you in your tracks, if you'll just stop and, and ground yourself and become present. And so the way I do that is I stop if I'm feeling anxiety from something that's happened, I look around the room and I start naming things. Oh, there's a red car. Uh, Oh, there's a a blue this, there's that. And I'll name it out loud. And within a few seconds, you're automatically present and you're grounded. Another good grounding technique is to close your eyes and listen for sounds and start naming the sounds. Like, oh, I hear a clock. I hear the wind. I hear the this. I hear the that. And within a matter of just a few minutes, you'll be present and grounded, which is the stop aspect. Then the refocus is to really be curious about the feelings that you're feeling and don't try and put them away. Don't try and and brush them aside, but really accept the feelings that you're feeling and um, just think about it and be curious and just kind of live in it for a minute. And then as you're doing that, you go into breathing and the breathing technique that I learned, it wasn't in this book, but I learned it from another book. Well, it's called the um, four, seven, eight. Okay. So you breathe in for four counts. You hold it for seven counts. And then you breathe out for eight counts. And you do that four times. And you'll find if you just do the stop, refocus, and breathe, when life slaps you in the face, uh, that you will be more calm You'll be putting more oxygen into your system and your body. Your brain will function more clearly, and you'll be able to then settle down and have uh, the opportunity to make a better, more calm decision, regardless of what's happening around you. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, you could use that in an emergency or just if you've gotten some bad news or something. I think that's fantastic. Most people who know you know you love music and that you're a lifelong musician. I'd love to know what albums or bands you you like to listen to when you want to relax a little or boost your mood, maybe calm down a bit. There's one that I listen to actually at night. Um, I'm trying to do a, a meditation every night before I go to sleep. And this really gets me kind of in a great space. And um, it's a guy who plays the electronic harp. Uh, He's German. His name is Andreas Vollenweider. It's just beautiful, relaxing music. Um, uh, And so that's one that I listen to a lot. Another person that I listen to quite a bit is James Taylor. Mm -hmm. And James Taylor has a release out that many people aren't aware of. And the title of the album is called Covers. And what it is, is it's James Taylor covering his favorite hits. (laughs) And uh, again, the the production quality is off the charts great. And it's just a really, really good, easy listening uh, album that gets me uh, relaxed and helps me calm down. Um, Kevin, that is the end of our five questions, but I just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule this morning. Have a good one. You see everyone. All right, David, back to you in Sydney. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Um, Great to hear from you and uh, looking forward to seeing you in person sometime in in the near future. Hey, it's my pleasure to toss over to uh, Dan Mazuga, who, of course, is our chief communications officer um, and leads our marketing group globally. And uh, great to have Dan with us. And he's going to uh, have a conversation with Dr. Wentz and Prudence. Over to you, Dan. Well, we are very excited to have two very special guests with us here today. Please welcome Dr. Wentz and Prudence. Hello to you both. Thank you. Hey, Dan. Well, hi, Dan. It's great to have you on video. Well, I like hearing you. Seeing you is very good as well. So 
you know, and, oh, and I've okay. known you for many, many years, but I have to tell you, I don't think any of us have ever experienced anything like what's going on in the world today. But not just as, uh, you know, the global economy, but also our USANA family. Um, I, I just wanted to ask you a few questions, Dr. Wentz. I know the deep love you, you both have, actually, I should say, and Prudence as well, for our associates all over the world. And oh, yes. I'm amazed with our associates' resiliency when you consider what's going on and you still look at the health of the company. What words of encouragement would you like to offer to your your USANA family? Well, we have the most wonderful people in the USANA family, and I'm so proud of what I'm seeing and hearing of what they're doing uh, in dealing with this global crisis. I would say just to continue doing what they're doing because, as Dr. Wendt said, I mean, we're hearing great things. Uh, luckily, with technology, they are able to be in touch with each other, their leaders, they can call their mentors, which um, allows them to continue to be able to work and communicate. There's nothing more exciting than that. I mean, it, it, the fact that it happened at this time, this place, um, we are the USANA family, and, and they're doing a great job. And we both really miss not being able to be in Seoul, as all of us oh, yes. are. Um, that, was, that was very sad. But the fact is, um, uh, we're able to communicate like this, and how great. Yeah, it's really we're good. seeing such exuberance of hope and positivity mm -hmm. coming from the USANA family. And I can tell you, you're adding to it right now. You know, I think a lot of us need that connection and having both of you join us. I, I, this is special for me. I know we get to talk about business things over the phone, but I actually get to see you too. I want to know how both of you are doing with everything that's going on in the world today. You know, we keep saying for this to happen, there's no other place in the world that we would rather be. This is our happy place. There's no doubt about it. But Dan, I have to tell okay. you, so our new normal, some secrets that only you can hear. Oh, these are gonna be good. I've been cutting Dr. Wentz's hair. This this is the first. What do you think? It Could looks pretty good. I, it looks I mean, I got out some shears. She borrowed these sheep shears <laughs> from her Pilates trainer. Uh, <laughs> and you can only imagine how comical it was with Dr. Wentz telling me how I should be doing his hair. So we started that, no, no, go this way. No, no, go that way. Anyway, I haven't let him do my hair yet, but uh, I'm, we might be getting there pretty soon. Uh, yeah. As well as, and I have to say, he is the best toilet bowl cleaner that you will ever find. Only Dr. Wentz would make a job out of cleaning the hey, toilet bowls. A microbiologist knows how to clean <laughs> well. Oh, you probably could eat off those floors in that bathroom. Right? Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> as well as I think the one other thing that's been real a big, pretty big change in our life because Dr. Wentz and I both enjoy eating out is that I'm doing a lot of cooking at home, which actually has been quite fun. And yeah. I'm going to assume that uh, you've got that stockpile of uh, supplements in your closet there from your... Oh, you know it. Well supplied or well stocked, right? Exactly. I got to yeah. tell you, if that's what you're going to be known for, that's a pretty good thing to be known for on the Indeed. Island. Indeed. But uh, you had already mentioned, Dr. Wentz, your stay-at-home orders are probably some of the more aggressive ones. And I would imagine it's been a good opportunity for the two of you to focus on some passion projects you might have. Tell them about the Mercy Centers that you're... Oh, most excited about. It's all about children. The partnership that we established with the Children's Hunger Fund that I funded setting up a, a clinic for orphans and impoverished children. And it was from that experience that Dave Phillips, founder of the Children's Hunger Fund, and I agreed that is what would be our best contribution. It was Uganda, in which we created our first medical center, in which we provided complete health care to what has now amounted uh, to thousands. We are in progress to have eight medical centers in which we provided complete health care. I've committed to supplying where needed mercy centers, which are structures which can be used for storage, for nutritionals, for medicinals, food packs, space for a classroom, some dormitory space, and all of them to have a kitchen for serving hot food, 
some of the places where we have medical centers will also have complementary mercy centers. Uh, you can't slow down. Uh, we know that. Uh, <laughs> you know, you talk about the philanthropic endeavors you, you both take on, and it really means a lot because I know you help with the USANA Foundation a lot and through the Wentz Medical Centers. You found the company with a vision, and we've, we've maintained true to that vision. You're always looking for ways to continue that and move it forward. What do you, would you say about this next generation of scientists that we have at USANA? I am so pleased with uh, the research and development team, the scientists, uh, uh, what Dr. Sinnott is doing in pulling in the scientists from all around the world to fill our pipeline with state-of-the-art products. I'm, I couldn't be more pleased with what is happening to ensure that USANA remains at the forefront of being the most innovative company in, in the field of, of nutritional science. I sleep very well at night. <laughs> <laughs> he does do that. Knowing that we, we've got the best. It's truly a testament to the, uh, the company you put together, sir. And I, I, I agree with you because I work with them on a daily basis. They're an amazing group. Um, and I bet you probably have that lab coat hanging over by the beach. So we'll the <laughs> he wears it over his bathing suit as we go. That's right. The only guy on the island in the lab coat, but he looks good. Exactly. Um, yes. You look great. And I want to I thank both of you, especially you, Prudence, for all you continue to do to make USANA and our, our customers and our associates the healthiest family on earth. It's so good to spend some time with you, Dan. And we both just want to say we, we love, love our USANA, USANA family. family. <laughs> we really do. David, back to you in Sydney. Hey, thanks, Dan. Um, and special thanks to Dr. Wentz and Prudence for taking the time to be with us today. A wonderful conversation. Uh, you know, as you just heard, the future of USANA is just so bright. Um, and we're really excited about all of the things that are happening around the world, especially in, in the research and development part of our business. You know, with more than 85 full-time USANA scientists and technicians hard at work around the world, we continue to develop and launch incredible forward-thinking products. And so we've got a special treat for you today to give you a little peek at some of the things we're working on. Here is Chief Science Officer and definitely the grooviest guy in the USANA family, Rob Sinnott. Hey, Rob. What on earth are you doing? Whoa. Hey, David. Welcome to the kitchen. Cool. You know, these things are under immense heat and pressure to extract those coffee beans. So the world's taken an unexpected turn. But I just want to let everybody know that the USANA Research and Development Team is still working hard to take care of the everyday issues. We haven't lost sight of the future. The need for new research and development is just as important now as it's always been. So would you like to see what we're working on? I'll take you on a virtual tour of the Future Lab. Come and follow me. All right, I'm back in the lab now, at least digitally. And before we check in with some of our scientists, I want to show you something. Let me share my screen. This is the R&D development process. Look at all the steps we have to take before we can launch a product. It's like a funnel. We could start with 200 products that are ideas. And as it goes through this pipeline, it whittles down to say 10 products that are ready for launch. The brightening series that Ashley talked to you about last week went through the same pipeline. Product launches start with an idea, which leads to a complicated ideation process. Ideas can come in from anywhere. They can come in from R&D, they can come in from marketing. Even the local markets contribute ideas to the process. These ideas need to be reviewed and approved by management. Many ideas get rejected or go into what we call our backlog file. But some of them are given the go-ahead to enter into the R&D design space, where preliminary prototypes and pilot formulas are developed. And then they go into the pantry. 
And no, it's not the same pantry with your cereal and your bread. It's called the R&D pantry, and it's where we put ideas that are ready to launch, but we don't have a timeline for launch yet. And there's lots of products that are actually in our pantry right now. Next, we figure out the market interest, the feasibility, and we develop timelines and launch plans, and we scope out all the phases of development. And lastly, we create the deliverables outlined in the scope. Then after months, sometimes even years of development, it's finally time to launch. So how about we check in with some of the members of the team and get a sneak peek at the kind of products that they're working on right at this very moment. So I'm gonna just invite them to this video call. So here's our director of new product research and development, Rachel Brewer. Hi, Rachel. And here's our director of product research and development, Kajun Ko. And here's our Executive Director of Global Health Education Nutrition Research. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy that we are all here together. So let's start with Rachel. So Rachel, what's new in the realm of microbiome research? So I'm currently working to understand the role of the microbiome in health, both the overarching human microbiome, but also all of the individual microbiomes, because every region of the body has its own specialized microbiome. That's why we have different probiotics for the gut and the mouth. But other parts of the body have their own microbiomes too. And also different people have different microbiomes. Research has shown that your microbiome changes from when you're a baby to a child, to an adult and into an older adult. And we're also working with outside researchers at universities to do clinical studies of ways to impact the microbiome. So what, what type of products do you think could be developed out of this research? Oh, lots of new products could come from this, including new probiotics, new pre and postbiotics, because believe it or not, researchers are still trying to understand what a healthy microbiome even is. Could this research actually produce more than one product? Oh, that's one thing that's so important about microbiomes. They're linked to so much. So we're working on probiotics for different people, a variety of ages, and all different types of microbiomes. So this could lead to probiotics such as for women's health, maybe for skin health, or even infant and toddler health. Wow. So again, we have to remind the audience that these are just possibilities for the future. But we want to share with you because we want you to see how exciting the potential is for future products. And Kajun, you headed up the recent launch of the much anticipated Celebi Brightening Series in Scrub and Mask. But you're not done with skincare research by any means and, and product development. So what kind of research has you the most excited right now? Yes. So we have been researching postbiotics and skin health. Postbiotics are not the live bacteria, but the byproduct or metabolites, you know, produced by good bacteria. They are mostly fermentation liquid itself or small molecules, you know, extracted from fermentation liquid or lysate uh, debris, you know, of bacteria cell walls. And these um, is a relatively new concept in the personal care industry. A study has been showing that the healthy microbiome strengths your skin barrier and locking hydration while also inhibiting infections and inflammation. Postbiotic skincare products are expected to support nurturing a good skin bacteria and rebalance skin microflora. So I'm looking for a safe yet effective postbiotic materials to include in suitable topical applications. Wow, Kajun, that sounds highly technical. So can you tell us what kind of benefits would that have for our future customers? So these postbiotics products should help those who do not simply fall into the category of dry, normal skin, oily, or a combination skin type, but the rather those who are seeking relief from particular skin problems. So Kajun, you and your team are doing phenomenal work in the skincare area, so please keep it up. And as you can see, Rachel and Kajun spend a good chunk of their time on the ideation phase of product development. But before a product can launch, it has to go through clinical studies that support it. But what kind of things are you working on right now? Last year, we completed the acute study for Copoprime Plus. Highly encouraged by the results, we are now doing a longer term study. We also just completed a study on the skin brightening regimen. 
with amazing results. Also, a prebiotic study is about to finish. We have many more studies on schedule for select products to be launched in the near future. Wow, that's exciting. The work you and your teams do is so necessary, and I just want to tell you how much we appreciate you, the audience appreciates you, our customers appreciate you. So thank you for taking time to give us a little peek into your world. Again, this is a small glimpse at the kind of research that we're doing and some of the potential products that could come out of it. And believe me, you'll be the first to know when we have other products that have made it all the way through the funnel and are ready to launch. In fact, I think we may have something big to talk about at the Americas and Europe live streaming event this August. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we're headed back to the lab. So David, back to you. Such an amazing and great conversation with some of the best and brightest of our research and development team. Coming up next week, it's all about you. We're gathering groups from across Asia Pacific, uh, the Americas and Europe to have a candid conversation about the triumphs and the challenges of doing business in this ever-changing landscape. I think you may be surprised um, and excited by some of the positive experiences that people have come uh, to work through as they've overcome some of the adversity that they've faced. But before we go, let's take a moment to congratulate our Asia Pacific top pace set of creators and we'll see you all next week. Diamond Director, Nat Pantacha, Chai Si Riru Ji Wada. Gold Director, Kitty Ng. Ruby Director, Prapa Pitaksa. Executive Ruby Directors, Steve Wong and Yoke Keen. Diamond Directors, James Tan and Susan Lean. Executive Eight Star Diamond Directors, Ada Chai and Jeff Ng. Ruby Directors, Priya Newt and Charn Chai Kila Peng. Executive 11 Star Diamond Directors, Shengja Park and Hak Bum Pyun. Executive 1 Star Diamond Director, Emmanuel Chang. Executive 2 Star Diamond Directors, Jasper and Stutz Clarina. Diamond Director, Jia He. Gold Directors, Yoko Lee and Raymond Ng. One Star Diamond Directors, Ramil and Levi Asilo. Executive Six Star Diamond Director, Hyun Jin Kwan. Executive One Star Diamond Director, In Suk Choi. Executive Five Star Diamond Directors, Shang Jin Lee and Jae Eun Jong. Executive Two Star Diamond Directors, Juwang Sao Ying and Winston Jaya. Diamond Directors, Holly Wu and Yen Su. Ruby Director, Mari Chris Chu Sarmiento. Gold Director, Chen Tao. Executive Eight Star Diamond Directors, Lei Wu and Susan Su. Ruby Director, Lincoln Lin. Executive 17 Star Diamond Directors, Bill and Jenny Huang. Executive Ruby Directors, Edwin and Josephine Kong. And the number one top pay setter, Diamond Directors, Dr. Jarun Sath and Nooch Sarah Atsawat Metapan. We are USANA. Thanks for watching.